In this presentation, we will discuss the payroll register and what is included in it. The payroll register is going to be one of the most important types of documents that will be used in order to track, record, and accumulate payroll information. It will include broadly broad categories including the wages, the gross pay, gross pay being uh, pay before the deductions. So of course that's not the net pay, not what we actually receive as paychecks. Then we'll record the deductions in the payroll register and then the net pay, what we actually receive as a paycheck and disbursements. So the payroll register is going to start to show us some of the complexity in payroll. Notice that no one component of payroll is that complex. Whenever we think of payroll laws, and uh, types of laws that relate to payroll taxes. When we think about it in an individual case, it doesn't seem too overwhelming. We could say, well, we can apply that individual law in an individual employee for an individual payroll. But when we start to apply uh, a lot of different sim fairly simple laws uh, to payroll, we can see that it does start to build up the complexity and the calculations and just the amount of data that we need. And we start to see that when we build the payroll register. So we'll go over just some of the data that will be included and then when we work a problem we'll see the, the payroll register and how to do some calculations uh, with it. So first we need the marital status. Why? Because the marital status is going to be needed in order to calculate federal income tax which is a progressive tax system and a marital status, married or single, is one of the components to that. Uh, number of withholdings are going to be what uh, are also going to be needed for federal income tax calculations uh, salary and hourly rate so clearly we will need the rate there so that we can calculate the wages that will be there for if they're salary or hourly uh, number of regular hours worked so we're going to need the hours worked and the hourly rate in order to calculate the regular um, rate and then we need the number of overtime hours worked however that be calculated whether it be based on a 40-hour work week or a 40 hour work week and an eight hour day. We need to break out the overtime hours and the regular hours. Then we can calculate the regular pay, that being the regular pay rate times the um, regular pay hours. And we can calculate the overtime pay, that being the overtime rate, usually time and a half, 150% of the regular rate times the overtime hours. Then we want the gross pay, which will include the regular pay plus the overtime pay to get the gross pay, meaning the amount we would get if not for deductions, including taxes and other types of deductions. Then we have the federal income tax. That's what we're going to have to withhold on. So, and that's going to be a bit difficult of a calculation in our worksheet, probably the most difficult calculation in our worksheet because we, we're going to need to know marital there's a few things to take into consideration we need marital status we need uh, the number of exemptions and we need um, the pay period uh, that is is involved is it monthly is it bi-monthly is it weekly and then we need to look up based on that information uh, th what the federal withholdings will be now of course the computerized system can help that process a lot but as we look at the manual process what's actually happening it's, it's a pretty complex system to, to do by hand at least. Then we have the social security and, and also not just to do by hand, it is a lot easier to do with a computer of course to look up this information but to explain it, to be able to understand it for an employee to know what's going on, then uh, it, ha it helps to, to see the, the actual process, what's actually being used. So we'll take a look at those calculations. The most complex thing we'll probably do. Social security, taxes then uh, is something that we need to withhold and it's a lot more straightforward people probably don't understand social security as well as federal income tax because whenever we think of taxes we typically think of 1040s and income tax that type of withholding and the social security is another form of tax but it's going to go into a separate fund it's still going to the fed separate fund the tax is a lot more straightforward however because it's going to be a flat tax in essence so we're just, and for the most part, just going to take the wages, the gross pay times a flat rate. T generally, it's currently around 6.2 but percent. But the rate doesn't matter. That's not really what you want to memorize as much as the process. The rate's easy to look up. What we need to know when, with regard to taxes is what type of tax is being applied 
and then just look up the rate and apply the tax that is being applied. And this is more of a flat tax. Medicare withholdings, we'll have to with calculate that as well based on gross pay times Medicare. Same thing, it's more of a flat tax, so it's easier to do. So we'll just take the gross pay times the rate, which is currently, I believe, 1.45%. But again, the percent's not as important. You need to know, well, it's just basically a flat tax based on the uh, gross pay. So whatever that rate is, easy to look up. We just take a flat tax, much more simplified than doing the federal tax, which is a progressive system. And then we have the state income tax withholdings. That will differ from state to state. Now, if we're in a different state or even a different country, then all we need to know is what, what is that state applying? Again, there's no new taxes under the sun, typically. The, the question is, are they applying some type of progressive tax rate where we have to look at the tables and take into consideration different factors? Or are they applying some kind of straight tax rate, a, a flat tax where it's a lot easier. We just take the gross pay and multiply it times the withholdings. So whatever they're using, usually the state will, will either copy the Fed in some way uh, and use a similar system or um, use a simpler system, a flatter tax. Uh, other state taxes, local taxes, again, these will change from state to state and location to lo location. A 401k or other retirement plan. This is going to be a benefit now. So um, these are things that a company may choose to offer or uh, an employee may choose to participate in or not. But when we give the, the gross pay, of course, when we give the, the paycheck out, we have to subtract this out because we're going to pay into the 401k for uh, the employee and give them the net check. And that's kind of like a benefit to the employee, as opposed to you might think the taking the Social Security and the federal tax and the, and the Medicare is a requirement. So offering the 401k and offering to take it out of, of the check and put it into uh, some type of retirement plan for the employee is a benefit. Those are good things for the, the employee and not necessarily mandated like taxes are. Uh, insurance deductions, same type of concept. If we have uh, insurance that is being taken out of the check I, on a time period, again, that's usually a benefit. That's usually a good thing that the company is, is doing that for the employee as a, as a choice. And we have to take that out in the register. Garnishments and levies uh, may not be considered a good thing, but again, <laughs> it's something that's going to be required by law. So if there's some type of garnishment that is given by a court order, uh, something happened and then and they're garnishing the wages, taking money out of their wages directly rather than uh, uh, you know, waiting for the person to pay the, <laughs> the legal fees. They're taking it out of the wages directly from the employer. Again, putting the, the emphasis on the employer. Now the employer is responsible for, you know, making the payment in, in the form of a garnishment rather than the employee being the one responsible to, to make the actual payment. Union dues are something that could be taken out. Again, that will apply only in cases where there is a, a union involved and then any other deductions that we're going to take out. So this is going to be a, you know, a long list of stuff that we're going to put into a worksheet. And some companies may not include some of this stuff, some of these other type of deductions, especially over here. State taxes could be similar or different, but uh, many, many of these things will apply here. And we'll put this together when we start to put together a worksheet. If we, if we just look at a worksheet now and we don't go through the calculations, it just looks like a a lot of numbers on a worksheet <laughs> so it's best to really build this the register step by step and concentrate on each calculation and then when we see the full product when we see all the employees on it and we see just a bunch of numbers and this calculations of all these things if we can then focus in on one individual thing like what is the marital status what is the number of withholding what is the salaries why do i need it then it's not that complex but uh if you if we look at a completed payroll register uh, with a, with multiple employees and state taxes, and especially if we have some of these other deductions, it's usually um, uh, more intimidating <laughs> than it needs to be if we break it down piece by piece. So that's what we'll do going forward. We'll start to create the payroll register. We'll look at it piece by piece and we'll do a problem where we calculate uh, these calculations in a payroll register. If you're on the payroll... Oh, the end.